Good morning, grade 8 students. I am Ms. Marioni R. Vargas, your TLE teacher. Today, I'll be discussing about the lesson 4 in your self-learning module, which is all about the importance of occupational health and safety or the OHS. But first, allow me to present to you the content standards, performance standards, and the most essential learning competencies of this topic. So let's have the content standards. Content standards. The learners demonstrate an understanding of the practice of occupational health and safety. Performance standards. The learners independently practice occupational health and safety. And for the most essential learning competency, or the MELPs, recognize the importance of OHS. I am hoping that at the end of my discussion, you will be able to meet those standards. So, let's see! Let's have an activity first. The title of this activity is Spot the Hazard. Go and get your answer sheet for you to be able to answer it. Is your answer sheet with you? If yes, let's proceed. Look at the picture. What have you noticed? Is it organized or not? Yes, I heard your answers. It is disorganized. Now, encircle those objects that may be found on the picture that can possibly cause harm. So I'll be giving you one minute to answer. Your timer starts now. For the meantime, keep that answer sheet first and we will continue answering that later. Let's proceed to our topic for today, the occupational health and safety. Okay class, let's read all together the definition of it. In 3, 2, 1. Occupational health and safety, or the OHS. It is a multidisciplinary field of healthcare concerned with enabling an individual to undertake their occupation in a way that causes least harm to their health. And aside from that, OHS is a planned system of working to prevent illness and injury when you work by identifying hazards and risk. Hazards? Risk? What are those? So let's start with the definition of a hazard. Hazard. It is an agent which has the potential to cause harm. For example, there is an oil spill on the floor. It is a hazard because it has a potential to cause harm when someone slips on it. While a risk, it is the chance or probability that you may be harmed when exposed to a hazard. An example I have given recently, which is the oil spill on the floor, someone is on risk when they are exposed on it. To understand it better, hazard is a thing that has a potential to cause harm, while risk is what possibly happen when you are exposed to a hazard. Or in Tagalog, Si hazard yung dahilan kung bakit pwede kang masaktan. Si hazard yung dahilan kung bakit pwede kang masaktan. 
At serious naman, ito yung mangyayari sa'yo kapag andyan si Hazard. To sum it up, Hazard poses no risk if there is no exposure to that hazard. Hazards and risks is not new. Actually, it is present everywhere. We may not totally eliminate it 100%, but good news, we can prevent it by simply following the three steps in risk assessment. So what are those three steps? First, identifying hazards and risks. Second, evaluating hazards and risks. And then the last one, controlling hazards and risks. Let's start with identifying hazards and risks. Identifying hazards and risks. It means looking for those things at your workplace that have potential to cause harm. Next, evaluating hazards and risks. It is the process of determining the level of risk created by the hazard and the likelihood or injury or illness occurring. Person evaluating the hazards should consider the following questions. Will that hazard can really cause harm? How serious that harm is likely to be? How often people may expose? How many people may be exposed? And lastly, controlling hazards and risks. Where the assessment reveals a problem, preventive measures must be designed and implemented. At this point, I'll be showing you a simple scenario wherein the three steps in risk assessment are applied. So, let's watch it! One day, when Juan is taking a rest under the tree, he suddenly remembered the lesson taught by his TLD teacher about the three steps in risk assessment. He went to their kitchen immediately to look for a thing that may cause harm. He saw a pail of water spills on the floor. He then started to think what may happen if someone exposed on it. He evaluated that hazard and a lot of risky things that might happen comes to his mind. He don't want to happen it. That's why he starts finding a way to control that hazard. He cleaned the spills and put everything on its proper place. He then realized that if there is no hazard, there is no risk as well. So, that's it. Hopefully, you do understand the proper ways on how to assess the risks. So again, the three steps in risk assessment are identify, evaluate, and control hazards and risks. At this juncture, I'll be showing you the different do's and don'ts inside the kitchen to avoid hazards and risks. Do not let any spills left on the floor. Arrange all stuffs that may cause trips. Use stairs or chairs and reaching high place things. A store knife in a proper way. Use gloves or pot holders when handling hot cooking utensils. Do not place poisonous chemicals beside your cooking ingredients. Label your ingredients properly to avoid misuse. Wash your hands before handling food to avoid food contamination. Plug in electrical appliances properly to avoid electric shock. Make sure your hands are dry when plugging in or plugging out electrical appliances to prevent electrocuting. Maintain proper posture when preparing food. Do not carry heavy things. Ask help if necessary. And lastly, do not do unnecessary action when cooking to avoid fire. To sum it up, today we discuss about the definition of the OHS, the hazard and the risk, the three steps in risk assessment, and the do's and don'ts inside the kitchen. In conclusion, 
In everything that we do, we should take into consideration our safety. Think before you do anything. Do it the safe way. Do it the right way. Do it every day. At this point, let's have your quiz. Go and get your answer sheet once again to answer the following questions. For the directions, write fact if the statement is correct. Otherwise, write bluff if the statement is incorrect. Remember, honesty is the best policy. Prefer even fail with honor than to pass with dishonor. So, let's start. Question number one. Arrange all stops that may cause trips. Is it fact or a bluff? Five seconds starts now. Time's up! The correct answer is fact. Question number two. Do not use stairs or chairs when reaching high place things. Again, do not use chairs or stairs in reaching high place things. Is it a fact or a bluff? Five seconds starts now. Time's up! The correct answer is bluff. Why? Because we need to use chairs or stairs in reaching high place things. Question number three. Store knife in a proper way. Again, store knife in a proper way. Is it a fact or a bluff? Five seconds starts now. Time's up! The correct answer is... Fact! Question number four. Make sure your hands are wet in plugging in or plugging out electrical appliances. Once again, make sure that your hands are wet in plugging in or plugging out electrical appliances. Is it a fact or a bluff? Five seconds starts now. Time's up! The correct answer is bluff. Why? Because it should be dry hands in plugging in or plugging out electrical appliances. Last question. Maintain proper posture in preparing food. So once again, the last question is maintain proper posture in preparing food. Is it a fact or a bluff? Five seconds starts now. Time's up! The correct answer is fact. That will be the end of your quiz. Hopefully that every one of you gained the perfect score. For your additional activity, Remember the first activity that we do? Go and get your answer sheet once again. From your encircled objects that may cause harm in a kitchen, state the best thing to do on how to solve it. Write at least three for five points each. Example, number one, the objects on the floor. Place it on a cabinet to avoid trips. So, as simple as that. Once again, you are going to write at least three for five points each. So, I'll be giving you three minutes to do that. Timer starts now.
keep all your answer sheets with you and pass it on your advisor on your retrieval day. This will be the end of my discussion. I hope you learned something. Before I end, I want to say that safety begins with you. Thank you so much. Once again, I am Miss Marioni Arvarga.